plurals you might call in the United States because the cigar just from one country. Here, it's close to birth cigar. So, what we like to talk about uh, is the quality control, the real aspects of quality control, what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do in quality control is determine which cigars that you're making are good quality and which cigars that you're making are bad quality, so you're able to steer the ship into a better quality. Even if you make cheap shit cigars, you want good quality cheap shit cigars, not <laughs> bad quality cheap shit cigars. So here we have everything in this area means we're doing quite well. Here is a suspect area, and up here it means this problem. Now, these are days of the month. Okay, we're moving into the month of March. Back behind me, you can see the month of February. So we're doing a lot better this month. We saw things that were going on in February that was bothering us. The red line is the line for cigars outside the fat at the quality control. So on a daily basis, we're measuring how many cigars we're doing outside that are incorrect, rotos, that need some type of adjustment, some type of su uh, supervisor adjustment, or some type of adjustment at the rolling and the punchero level. So the blue line is going to represent all of the cigars that are right inside here. And these are cigars that we're going through. We're looking at every single cigar, one cigar at a time. Some of the things that you hear from other factories, if they go through cigars, it's a difficult pill to swallow. Everybody wants to say the same thing. But there's companies who pay to do it, and there's companies who don't. What we're trying to do is break the rules. Because we can break the rules to do things better, not to be to make a better cigar than the next guy, but to be able to make a better cigar for, for our company and for the market. So there's certain things that machines can't do for you. Machines can't do what we do here or what we do here. Because a machine is not going to be able to see I made three nice piles here of tobacco for you. Well, these three piles of tobacco represent why the human element is very different than machines. Here at your state, we believe in putting people to work. Because people are going to check and spot check and check again to make sure that the cigars that we're making are meet the quality standards that we really want to achieve. Now, when we tell you in the morning, hey, we want you to make 150 cigars before lunch and 150 cigars after lunch. That's 300 cigars in a day. And we're going to give you the tobacco. We're going to weigh out the wrapper, make sure you have the wrapper. How many wrapper needs a cigar got? One. How many binds does a cigar got? One. 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 Now, if you something like that, they base a binder, or we can call base a binder, or we can make two binders, or we can call it whatever we want to. But at the end of the day, you make a cigar by making a cigar. You don't make something else, you make a stick. Some people can make a better stick by doing little secrets that they have or things that make their cigars better. That's the name of the game. Okay, you want to make better cigars and will taste better. Uh, not that just your competitors, but you want to push to the limit in the factory. So the human element of, of that to me is the way you do that. Reserving time with your rowers to spend looking at the tobacco, rowing your own tobacco, processing the tobacco, all of these things are going to make a great deal. But when you tell a guy on the production floor of Ochero, here's enough tobacco for 300 cigars, 150 before lunch and 150 after lunch, he has to go at that point and make those cigars. He comes back to you before lunch and he comes by and he's thrilled with himself, the whole teeth and everything is shining. And he's saying, look, man, I just delivered you 300 cigars. Here's the wrapper. I got no left. I used them all. If a guy delivers you 150 once, well, that's a problem. He's only giving a wrap of 150, right? So, if he only gave you 100, thank you very much, mm -hmm. if he only gave you 150 sticks, that means he's going right. If he gave you 149, there's a wrapper leaf for instance, they're waiting to count it. Same with the binder, the same with the filler. When we talk filler, we're talking yield. You guys hear the yield number. You gotta think, imagine what that is when it's with texture. Yield, humidity, these are little words of art that are thrown at you. You gotta think about them. When I say yield, I'm talking about the amount to make a pound of mass. Uh, amount of pounds to make a thousand units, always the same. We're talking yield on, we talked about it one time in uh, oh, yeah. Connecticut, uh, uh, ASP tobacco, it cost you about $40 a pound for A1s, $36.50, $37 a pound for twos, $34 for threes, down the quality level you go, and the one's going to make it. When you say that, hey, what about a broad beef wrapper that's costing $22 a pound, or $26 a pound, or $24, depending on the, on the quality level and the grade, and it's taking you 22 pounds, 24 pounds, 20 pounds per thousand, it means it's taking you 20 pounds or 23 pounds of tobacco to make a thousand units, right? What's more expensive? 
Connecticut at 40, <coughs> it's more lethal at 22. Connecticut at 40, wrong. It's the drug lead at 22 that's costing you more money because your yield is worse. You're getting four pounds to make a thousand cigars from the Connecticut to Ecuador, and you're getting 22, 24, 25 pounds per thousand units using the drug lead. So it's taking you four times the amount of tobacco to make the same amount of thousand cigars, so even though it's cheaper per pound, it's costing you a lot more. All these things that I'm talking to you about, they're business related, they're tobacco production related, but all of them are important because every penny counts. And every time you charge your customer more money, he's charging more you guys more money. And down the line, you're giving worse quality for more money. So efficiencies are the fact that very important, but also is the blend. You know, how do you, how many cigars do you smoke in 2009 that are great, and in 2010 don't taste the same? Cigars in 2010 that were great, they're even better in 2011. Guess what? It ain't good that they're better. In a way, it's good because you're getting a better stick, but overall, you really want to keep the cigar consistent. That consistency, you think about it year to year, and that's why people buy their tobaccos in the buying season, and they plan their tobaccos when they do. But before you think year to year, you better think month to month or week to week, and guess what? You gotta blend day to day. People don't talk about that. If you can't blend the same spot Wednesday and Thursday, what are you worried about next year for? You gotta figure out how to blend it from Monday to Tuesday. You understand what I'm saying to you? And how you're gonna do that is the human element. That costs money. That costs you money. Having a human element that means supervisors that are people saying this cigar ain't right. What are we doing with that cigar? Are we re etching, take the wrapper off, we go the cigar production floor? Or are we going to leave the cigar on, stir the cigar, make sure it fill out of it? You make it short for the cigars, you're not trying to make money on short for the cigars. You want to take short for the cigars? They don't care if you call 70, 30, 60, 40, short fill, short fill, but ain't no filler, short filler. Short fill cigars, your objective is to take short filler turn it to cash, turn it to back into cash. You're not turning profit on a short fill of tobacco, you understand? If you get lucky with a La Via Mano, you can make 10%, 12% profit, that's really good. It means you were smart, you made a nice day, you can sell a cigar, that's good. But the real objective is to take short fill of tobacco and turn it to cash. It's worth money, but you gotta handle it correctly and turn it to cash. Create a product that you can sell it in a value price store, two or three bucks, four bucks, whatever money is these days, what they go at. How are you going to tell a guy who's bringing you 150 cigars before lunch that your cigar, are you going to tell it stays, cool, that your cigar is consistent year to year if you can't make your cigar consistent day to day? How about hour to hour? How about hour to fucking hour? How are you going to tell? You've just given the guy this much saber, right? And you want 150 cigars before lunchtime. You're giving him this much visa, right? You all know what saber visa over here is, saber visa over here. So you're going to give this much food, so you're going to give this much Sahara. Hey, uh, Jose, I want 150 sticks. How are you thinking about next Wednesday or a year from now or a month from now? You can't even get the same cigars before lunch, because you know what they're doing? They're taking the Seiko, right? It's nice and easy to work. And they're taking the Seiko and they're making cigars out of it, making cigars, so they realize, guess what? It's now half an hour to lunchtime. i got to deliver 150 cigars, and I'm on track. I have made... 140 of them, and I got no Seiko left because it's easy to work with, and a little bit of this was used, okay, a little bit of something they had, but that's a little harder to use, so it's a lot more of the hair left over, and your Viso, fuck, you aren't even using Viso all the time, so guess what, you got no Seiko left, you got a little bit of this Viso right here, and way too much of the hair, and you have to deliver another 15 cigars before the end of the day, how are you blending, you didn't make the blend, well they went the right way. You were making the blend the way you want to make the blend. So what is our goal? We've got to make sure these piles are moving down together. We have to sit and monitor. That's every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes. That costs money. Doing that costs money. But it's achievable. It's the level of where do you want to be in 5 years, 10 years, 20 years. Biggest, smallest, best quality of the drum. They don't care how big the real estate is. They don't care how big the pain is. What they care about is making quality. Consistency every day. The point of the Nicaragua, same fundamentals. This is about creating, they're happy with the size of the company that they got. They're looking to create a quality product so they have a pass down generation to generation. Other companies like Tapin, he's looking for quality too, but he wants to be the biggest in the world. So, and Oliva, same thing, they want to be the biggest factories in the world. So they're looking for quality because they are very high quality factories. I mean, we ain't got anything on either of them. They're very good quality factories. But it's the way that they run their factories. Not just them, anybody. Nicaragua is a very high standard. 
You know what I'm saying? You gotta get up early in the morning, have your A game on, to stick your head up with the beam, or with the drum, or with Placencia, or with Coya de Nicaragua, or Oliva, and even these days Perdomo. Kiki's doing a great job. Nicaragua, this is it, right? Cubans are coming here, they're all, they're all here, spies. You know what I'm saying? Spies, they're here. And they're looking at the way we're on back with Because we're learning from what they're doing in Cuba, no different. The Israelis and Cubans, they're learning how to make cow faces. That's what the sense of a genius, one of the best farmers probably who's ever lived. He's coming here and showing us ways and things. We're no longer looking at the color of a leaf to determine is that a leaf a ligero or a viso. We're looking at the texture. So I keep telling you guys about texture. The human elements of things, the texture. People talk about rolling cigars and about why a company is successful or not successful. Oh, because my limited edition this, or my vintage this, or um, I see 23, I made that, and everybody's going to talk about marketing. But guess what? Some of the things, oh, see, it's a rotor. It never will be quality control. 